We're going to be starting off with the absolute basics of mechanism. This is going to be very beginner friendly and digestible. So the first thing you're going to want to find is osmium ore. This is going to be pretty much everywhere in the game, a similar level to kind of iron, etc. You're going to find it very, very easily. Smelt this up, get your osmium ingots, and we can get going. So the first few things we're going to want to look at doing is actually making power. It is a tech mod, and we do need to make power. The first way I would say to do this is a heat generator. All I need to do is put in something like coal into the heat generator, and it's going to turn it into lava to make electricity. To make a heat generator is very simple. It's going to be some iron ingots, an osmium ingot, a furnace, some copper ingots, and some wood. Now, I won't be showing all recipes in this tutorial, and I will assume you know how to use JEI. So that's our heat generator. After that, there are a few other simple ways of making power. We have a solar generator, where you can see the power output is at the bottom. So this is where you want your cables to come out of. Same where it's going to be the front on the heat generator. And we've also got a wind generator. Hotter and sunnier biomes will do better. And the higher you put up a wind generator, the better this will be. And you can see here if the sky is blocked or not when we go into it. In the solar generator, again, you can see if it's sunny or not, and if it will actually be generating any power. Now, if we look at the recipe for a wind generator, we can see that it actually needs some energy tablets, which need infused alloys, a basic control circuit, and again, some infused alloys. And this looks like a bit more of a complex way to build this. So the ingredients we're actually going to need are going to use a metallurgic infuser. This is one of the most basic machines you can make in mechanism. Remember, the heat generator does not need it. I would recommend starting with a heat generator to power your metallurgic infuser. I've got it here, and you can see it's going straight into the metallurgic infuser to power it. So let's just get a block of coal and put that in there to power up our metallurgic infuser. So you've got your power on the right. We have a resource column on the left. Yellow box is where we put our resource. Red box is where we're putting something to be infused. So let's say we're going to take the, the alloy, which you're going to need in a lot of recipes. What we're going to need to do is actually put some redstone in the yellow box. You can use redstone ore, blocks of redstone. It's really up to you. And then I'm going to get some iron ore or iron ingots, and I'm going to put this in here. And slowly but surely, it's going to infuse the iron ingot with redstone. And there we have it. We have an infused alloy. And that is how the metallurgic infuser actually works. It really is quite simple. If we hover on the metallurgic infuser in JEI and press U, you can see what we can actually make with it. We can infuse biomass into stairs, etc., to make mossy versions. We can put diamonds in there with an infused alloy to make reinforced alloy. And lots of other things, including the one I've just shown you here with iron. Um, you can also then put refined obsidian into reinforced alloys to make atomic alloy, etc., etc. There's a few really useful um, recipes. The other one I want to show you now is basic control circuits. Again, it's redstone, but rather than iron, it's osmium, and that will make your basic control circuits. That pretty much gets you going for making solar and wind generators. Mechanism offers quite a few different ways to transport energy, items, and other things, as well as store those things. And that is what we are going to be looking at now. So Mechanism actually has four variants of everything. You have a basic, an advanced, an elite, and an ultimate version of each item. Here we have universal cables. These cover electricity. We have mechanical pipes, which will cover fluids. We have pressurized for gases. We have logistical for items and thermodynamic for heat transportation. And again, each one comes in a basic, advanced, elite, and, for, and ultimate version. We have the same thing with energy. So this is energy cubes, and this is how we store energy. Again, basic, advanced, elite, and ultimate. Let's take a quick look at our um, cables here. So if you want to make a basic universal cable, if I press R in JEI, you can see it quite simply needs two steel ingots and some redstone dust. Now, the question then is, how do we make steel? 
Well, I'm going to show you that in just a moment. We also have basic mechanical, etc. If I just put in basic, you can see there's lots of different items here. You can see for mechanical, it's steel with a bucket. For the pressurized, it's with glass. Logistical is with a basic control circuit, which is made in the metallurgic infuser. And thermodynamic is with copper. So they all need steel to make these, these basic ones at least. Well, if I run over to here in my tutorial laboratory, we have two metallurgic infusers and an energized smelter. And this is how we're going to make steel. So in the metallurgic infuser, I can put in here carbon from coal. So if you put into the yellow slot, the resource slot of a metallurgic infuser, coal, you get carbon. I then want to get my iron ingots. And I'm just going to push these through here. I'm actually going to speed this up. I'm lazy. You can see here, it's then being turned into enriched iron. If you make another metallurgic infuser and again put carbon in here, that will turn the enriched iron into steel dust. Push this into an energized smelter. And voila, you've got your steel ingots. If we want to look at how to make advanced, elite and ultimate, it's on the top, fairly simple. For advanced, you're going to need eight of the basic ones and an infused alloy, which again is redstone in a metallurgic infuser with iron. So you're infusing iron with redstone. For elite, you're going to need eight advanced with a reinforced alloy, where you're then going to infuse your infused alloy, which you've just made, with diamond. And for ultimate, it's the same again, but with an atomic alloy, where you're going to put refined obsidian in to then infuse that reinforced alloy that you've also just made. And that's how we work up the steps. And it's pretty much the same thing when it comes to anything that you're upgrading. You can see here we're using um, more atomic alloys and an elite energy cube, an advanced one. And it, it's the same process um, through these recipes. So a basic energy cube stores 1.6 million, 6.4, 25 and 102. We also have the same for storing not just energy, but gases and also liquids. Here we have a basic chemical tank, an advanced, an elite, an ultimate. And we have a basic, advanced, elite, and ultimate fluid tank as well. And the recipes will follow the exact same premise as these did. And that is how we're going to move energy, liquids, gases, items, and um, heat around, as well as store energy, chemicals, and liquids. Or gases, sorry, not chemicals. Mechanism also has a lot of basic machines. One thing I want to talk through here is not just the machines, but also how to operate, use them, and put things in and out of them. So we're going to start off with the enrichment chamber. In fact, no, we're not. That was a big fat lie. We're going to start off with the configurator. This item here, which will need lapis, infused alloy, an energy tablet, and a stick, will basically make your, your wrench, if you will. You can see it lights up when we're looking at things. If I shift, I can actually scroll through configurating items, fluids, gases, um, etc. Generally, I just leave it on wrench or configurate items, um, depending on what I'm doing. Let's say for this enrichment chamber we don't need to know what it does yet we're just looking at how we're going to pull things in and out of it let's say i put this logical transporter which is for moving items let's say i want to pull out of the left side of here well, i can shift click and shift click again and it's going to show it as pulling out of this side of the machine i can then close it off completely attach it push so it's pushing um into here or pulling out I can also go into the machine. You can see I've got quite a few little options here. Uh, side config, where we can say, do we want to automatically eject things out of it? And what are we doing in the top, left, bottom, right, etc.? So you can see here, the back is where I'm saying energy is coming in. The left is currently input. I can change it to output, input and output, energy, etc., or nothing. And this is where we're changing what we are doing on each side. We can also clear it to nothing. So let's say I want things to go in on the left and things to go out on the right i would configure it like this i can also go into security where it's private trusted or public and i can also go to upgrades and when you see in here upgrades you can actually see which upgrades are supported 
So not every machine can you know use every upgrade. So the ones that are highlighted are the upgrades we can use in this machine. Speed, energy, muffling, uh, and that's it. So let's have a look at those. So if we go into the machine, let's put some sunflowers in here, and you can see it's very, very slow. And I think, well, I'm not doing with all this rubbish. So I'm going to put in some speed upgrades. I can put them in one at a time, like this, or I can put in multiple. And you can only have up to eight in each machine. Now, you can see here the effect is 10 times. However, it's going to use a lot more energy when I do this. So I can also put in some energy upgrades. I can put in some like this, or, oh, no, not throw them like that. Or, again, I can, uh, if, I, if I know what I'm doing, I can shift click them in. Um, oh, it's already done all eight. And you can shift click from here as well, and this will like put them in like this. Because I'm in creative, it's not, um, it's not going down. But if you see, it says in the top left, zero FE out of eight KFE. Now it's 80. So you can see that they are going in there. The muffling one literally will just silence the machine. I've got it muted for the purpose of the tutorial, so you can't hear it, so it doesn't matter. But that is how you upgrade your machines. And you can see here, we've made 64 yellow dye, and it's really quite quick. And that is how you input and output out of machines. So what machines do we have? Well, we have, of course, the enrichment chamber, where you can see we can enrich things. And if you go to JEI and press U on an item and then go to enrichment chamber, you can see all of the different recipes that you can enrich with the enrichment chamber. Things like beetroot or poppies into red dye. And there's loads and loads of uses for this. We then have the crusher. And this is basically going to crush things into other things. The recipes for all of these are fairly simple, by the way, only needing, you know, basic control circuits, only needing the metallurgic infuser. That's the only machine they need where you can extract redstone into osmium and things like that. So if we look at the crusher, you can see it can crush ingots into dust, plant matter into biofuel and things like that. We have the combiner. This will simply put like raw iron into iron ore. Sweet berries into glow berries, redstone dust into ores, and things like that. That also has a multitude of different uses. We have the Energize Smelter, which is basically just an upgraded version of the smelter. Especially as you can put speed upgrades in here, it can get quite quick at smelting. Then we have the Precision Sawmill, where you can make pressure plates and, you know, God knows what else into um, planks. An oak boat with chest can go into an oak boat and chest. It's a way of deconstructing items, basically. Then we have a pump. This is a bit more interesting at this point. At the back, let's just get in there. This is where the power goes in. And if I put water under here, this is actually going to pump the water. Let's actually power it with a creative uh, thingy, my Bob. And if I get a mechanical pipe and put it on top, you can see it is pumping that water. And these do a very efficient job of it. And you can also upgrade these with a filter upgrade to get heavy water instead of regular water, and it does have energy and speed. And these are really good for pumping water. We then have the resistive heater. What you can do here is provide it with power, and it will heat something up. So again, I'm just going <laughs> to completely ruin this. You can see here it's now turned on, and the temperature is getting to, you know, whatever. If I put 100, it's going to use 100 Fe a tick. If I put 500... It's going to use that much, getting it hotter and hotter. So if you need to actually heat a machine, a resistive heater is the way to do it. And we also then have a fuel wood heater where I can put in things like spruce wood, and that will, instead of using power, heat up the machine um, you know, with thermodynamic cables from natural resources rather than electricity. And those are the most basic machines that you will need in the Mechanism mod. Mechanism does actually offer, with the Mechanism Generators mod, some really unique ways of making early game power. Now, we're going to look at two things here specifically, and that is the gas burning generator and also the bio generator. So... Let's have a look at what the hell is going on here first with the gas burning generator. So with the gas burning generator, we can see it's fairly easy to craft, only needing some infused alloys with the metallurgic infuser. 
an electric core, which again doesn't really need that much. It's just some dusts and infused alloys and some steel casings. What we can do here is we can pump in gases and it will burn them to generate power. And in this instance, we're using the electrolytic separator to feed it with hydrogen. So we're pumping water with an electric pump here. Energy going in, water coming out the top, going into the front of the electrolytic separator. And this is going to pump in water and it's going to separate them into hydrogen and oxygen. What you can see here is that the oxygen is full. So we're not getting any hydrogen. So what do we do about this? Well, this button here, we can say dump excess. So it will dump all the excess oxygen. We can do the same on hydrogen so that none of it gets clogged up. Now you can see that this pressurized tube is full of hydrogen. You can see this one's blue because it's full of oxygen. Hydrogen always comes out of the left of the machine and oxygen always comes out of the right hand side of the machine. So we're putting into the gas burning generator hydrogen, as you can see here, and it's at a burn rate of two millibuckets per tick. And this is generating energy because I am using such a OTT cable. It looks like it's empty, but it's not. It's just that the cables can hold so much energy. And this is going to burn through the hydrogen to make our energy. And that quite simply is how you use a gas burning generator. You can also use more advanced gases like lithium. And I will link in the description a complete video tutorial on how to use um, lithium. Sorry, not lithium. Completely wrong. Ethylene. I meant to say ethylene. In the description, there is a complete ethylene tutorial, which is a much better gas. Hydrogen is a lot simpler. Ethylene is a bit more complex, but it will burn a lot more and make more energy. You can still do it early game at this point. But like I said, there's a separate tutorial in the description for that. What we also have is the crusher and a biogenerator. The crusher, we can put organic matter in and it will crush them into biofuel like this. We can then say output on the right with a logistical transporter, pushing it into our bio generator. And that will use bioethanol, which it basically, well, it burns through the biofuel that you've pumped in to make bioethanol into power. And this little green hole on the front is where your energy will come out of. And you can actually see on the back, it's got the ethanol in there, which I think is really quite wholesome. And that is a bit more advanced generators, but still at a basic level for mechanism. And that is it for the beginner's tutorial for mechanism. Now, do check the description below because I am doing intermediate and advanced guides. You can basically say that this guide you're watching is part one and the intermediate will be part two, etc. Again, it's in the description. So we've looked at the ores we're going to need, some basic energy generation, how we're going to infuse things with mechanism. We've looked at how we're going to store and transport things, the basic machines that we have available to us, and some slightly more advanced ways of making power. In the next video, we're going to start going into some slightly more advanced ways of processing and using the tools that mechanism has given us. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a thumbs up. Let me know your comments down below if you wish. And if you do have any requests for videos, you can join my Discord and there's a Minecraft mod tutorial request channel because I love to know what you guys want. And if you would like to support the channel, you can join my Patreon and that is also in the description.